Hello, I'm Kai Lukoff, a PhD candidate at the University of Washington. Today I'm presenting our research on how the design of YouTube influences user sense of agency. For smartphone apps, a common business model is to capture and resell attention. This leads designers to devise features that capture as much of that attention as possible. In everyday life, people attempt to resist all kinds of temptations, such as smoking, drinking, and spending money. However, the temptation with the highest rate of failure of all is media use, which today increasingly happens in mobile apps. And of course, this high failure rate is not an accident when those mobile apps are designed to capture as much attention as possible. Concerned design practitioners and researchers have responded from within what we call the screen time paradigm. In this paradigm, the objective is to limit the time that users spend on their phone. Yet users report that these tools often indiscriminately block access to needed features and that reducing screen time is a poor proxy for their actual goals. In this research, we instead explore how to support the user's sense of agency, that is, an individual's experience of being the initiator of their actions in the world. A lack of agency over technology use is linked to negative life impacts such as a loss of productivity, sleep, and social relationships. A second characteristic of the screen time paradigm is that it relies upon external features that apply universally to all apps. In this research, we instead shift the focus to redesigning the internal features that might cause an app to be problematic in the first place. As a test case for this approach, we focus on YouTube, one of the most popular social media apps in the world. Our first research question asks, which existing features of the YouTube mobile app influence sense of agency? To investigate this question, we conducted a survey with 120 YouTube users from the US. Our survey asked, what are three things about the mobile app that lead you to feel least and most in control over how you spend your time on YouTube? This diverging bar chart shows the results. They are ordered according to which design feature was mentioned the most frequently by respondents. The features that primarily led participants to feel least in control were recommendations, ads, and autoplay. The features that primarily led participants to feel most in control were playlists, search, subscriptions, watch history, and play controls. Let's look at one example. Survey participants reported that playlists led them to feel more control. One participant wrote, I can create playlists or queue videos in advance to limit what I watch to a specific list instead of endlessly searching around for what I want. So as compared to searching around or browsing recommendations, playlists had a clear end that served as a signal for them to finish their session on YouTube. Our second research question asks, what changes to these internal features might increase sense of agency? We were particularly interested in understanding how to change features that the survey participants said sometimes made them feel more in control and sometimes made them feel less in control. To investigate this question, we conducted co-design sessions with 13 general users of the YouTube mobile app. This included an exercise in which participants sketched and explained what changes would give them greater control. Participants explained that they used YouTube in two different use cases and that they preferred different levels of control for each. When they had a specific intention in mind, such as watching a tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's cube, they wanted more control. When they did not have a specific intention in mind and they just wanted to relax or felt bored, they wanted to let YouTube take control. This leads us to our design implications. Our first design implication is to adapt the interface to the specificity of the user's intention. For example, when the user has a specific intention, the designer can present a search first interface. On the other hand, when the user has no specific intention, the designer can present a recommendations first interface. Switching between these two interfaces might be done either manually by the user or automatically by the system. Our second design implication is to help the user make a micro plan, which we define as a lightweight plan that guides behavior for a short time, usually just a single session of use. So for example, the playlist feature in YouTube helped with this, but we argue that there's more designers can do here by drawing upon knowledge from the field of behavior planning. In conclusion, we encourage designers to think beyond the screen time paradigm, support greater control when users have a specific intention in mind, and help users microplan. Thank you.